Truckers of Reddit, have you ever been in a situation where you needed to utilize the runaway lane when going downhill? What happened? Or struck driver here, was heading down an area called the Moonby Hills. It's a combination of 6-8% grade hills and it's fairly narrow in spaces. It was crawling down in 7th gear, 3rd overdrive. On the engine brake when I heard a bang and the motor began chewing oil from the turbo into the engine creating a runaway event. Before I could even think it had accelerated and revved right out past the hard RPM cut off and starting screaming down the hill. I swung it straight into a brake failure bay and let the sand and uphill slow and stop the truck which stalled it. Ended up getting a tow truck to pull the truck out of the bay via the rear ring feeder and towed back to Newcastle. Was scary how quick it happened but not the scariest thing I've had happen on the road. I was in a 26 meter B double loaded to 68 D. 137,000 pounds of flammable oil. US trucking industry guy here. It's insane the weights you guys move out there. Just your load was nearly double illegal gross over here. I've just got my truck and trailer license as my job involves transporting machinery between quarries. First real big trip away from the city and I hit a 6% gradient a couple gears too high and was having to use a fair amount of brakes to keep it in check. Scariest crap of my life not having any real idea how long before they start to fade on a steep hill. When crap hits the fan like that, you can feel the fire in your veins. As they say you can go down a hill too slow 1000 times, but you can only go down too fast once. I never had to use a runaway ramp, but I did burn up some brakes going westbound into Salt Lake City, Utah on I-80. I had made that trip several times and always downshifted a gear or two as I was supposed to, but it always felt like I didn't need to and I was going way too slow. So this one time I decided, frick it I'll just keep it in 10th. It will be okay we'll never make that mistake again. Brakes were super spongy and smoke billowing out of the wheels. Thought I was gonna crap my pants. The worst part was it was early morning and there was a ton of traffic. Luckily no one was hurt because of my stupidity that day. You're not the first, nor will you be the last trucker to make that mistake. I-80 heading into SLC from over the mountains looks like a nice easy drive. But I've seen more trucks with smoking brakes or who were actually in the runaway ramp then I'd care to think about. I have never used the runaway lane but I did witness it being used once. It was the first real heavy load I ever hauled. 56,000 pounds of steel plates and bars. I was going down a section of the cockle hollow below the Penisk summit. I was in an old GMC Brigadier with no engine brake but really good brakes. I started from the brake check nice and slow and kept the truck in third gear in low range, about 30 kmph. Foot on the brake at 10 pounds of application pressure. This isn't enough to overheat the brakes as they are dissipating enough heat to keep working properly. I was about 3-4 kms down when a fully loaded lumber truck went flying past me. I first thought maybe I was really being too careful but soon I realized I was doing the right thing. The truck went up the runaway lane and went right to the top. Then it came back down. There was lumber everywhere. The truck jackknifed and stopped before getting back to the highway. It took a couple of weeks for the lumber to all get picked up. Second hand story, but my dad lost a buddy of his who was unable to take the runaway lane when his brakes went out. Some family with kids were picnicking on it, and so he chose to drive off the road in a different direction. My dad's a truck driver, holds various gases, oxygen, acetylene, argon, etc. Driving west towards Dodge City, KS loaded, it was blizzard conditions, snow on the road, cars in the ditch. Truck comes around and gets in front of our rig, doing way faster than is safe in the conditions. Vanishes from view in the blizzard. Few minutes later, we see the truck come into view, flipped on the road, had to jump into the oncoming traffic lane to stop. There was no way we were stopping on ice before we smashed into the flipped vehicle. Narrowly missed oncoming traffic. It was absolutely horrifying. My dad stopped the truck, jumped out and ran to the truck. There were three passengers. The driver had become intimately familiar with the steering wheel and was dead. The second passenger, a woman, was hanging halfway out of the back window, also dead. The third was bleeding profusely. My dad held her until she died in his arms. He had a lot of blood on him. He was taken to a nearby hospital for testing. Bloodborne infections. STDZTC. Just in case. We'll never forget it. Why? People in a hurry just couldn't stand being behind a truck. 
decided to jump ahead in a blizzard and died for it. Absolutely stupid. There's no reason they should be dead right now. For the love of everything good, please drive safely. You're not going to get to your destination much quicker anyways. And 9 times out of 10 that truck driver is driving as safely as possible. That's what they're trained to do. Stopping at railroad tracks. Taking extra time on turns. Making slow movements on the highway. Be patient. They're trying to look out for you while driving a huge rig. Former trucker here was driving north through the mountains of Colorado towards Pueblo, and it was my first time dealing with anything like the Rocky Mountains so I was taking it nice and slow with my hazards on and in the right lane. This was in the spring, and there wasn't much snow on the ground aside from a light dusting. I remember passing another truck pulled to the shoulder on my way up, nothing out of the ordinary. However, as I was heading down the mountain, which can be scary as crap in an 18-wheeler, Trust me, I saw the same truck I passed earlier fly by me in the left hand lane. Now being passed on the left going downhill in the rocky mountains by another tractor trailer is crazy enough. But what really makes this story is this guy's trailer brakes were on fire. He was pulling a load. Could tell because the trailer was sealed. And if you know anything about trucks you know there's only so much braking you're supposed to do before they overheat and, worst case, catch fire. This guy's truck looked like a freaking comet as he sped down the mountain at what I thought was a surely to be deadly pace. I grabbed the mic to the radio and called out to him. Hey driver, your brakes are on fire. I mean literally on fire this rough and weathered sounding voice comes back over the speaker of my radio and says. Cool as a cucumber. I know. And he disappeared around a curve. I never saw any wreck truck, emergency crews or even mention of an accident over the radio. I did see a discarded fire extinguisher on the ground at the base of the mountain though. I'm a passenger on my husband's truck. Luckily never had to use them. But the way people will just cut in front and start braking always puts me on edge that we're going to one day. I can't even get that mad at them. I'm sure I did stupid crap with a truck behind me when I was driving a car. It's just something you don't think about before you've been in one. I hated some days, and with people on their phones now more than ever, not paying attention. We have a dash cam, we're up high, it can see you with your phone in both hands as the sides of your hands steer and your head is tilted down looking at it. Please put the phone down. The year was 1988, I was just 20 years old and living in high level, Alberta, Canada. I took a job, promising by wage standards, driving a split axle dynamite truck. The words dynamite truck don't even give credence to exactly how dangerous they are. Not one big cubicle of dynamite but actually separated compartments inside and lined so the detonators get loaded up in a separate section from the actual dynamite. We were to leave higher level for Fox Creek where we were going to load up and then return but I was told we were leaving higher level at an odd time. When I got on the trip the co-driver was the owner of the business and he told me we were leaving at an odd time to miss the way scales. My first trucking job and I already lined up by ownership to break laws. Ugh. So we got to Fox Creek and not only did we two load up, we overloaded. Yep he wanted that truck filled to the top which included throwing things into the separated compartments to pack them up even more. Fast forward a few hours. This was a one way all the way trip. No sleep no break. It's dark. It's snowing and we're heading north. Just as we were about to head into the Peace River Valley, at that designated point where all trucks should start gearing down, especially overloaded dynamite trucks on a snowy night, I attempted to gear down and that's when the split axle jammed. Now freewheeling down the valley on a snowy night, I had just the brakes to use to get that truck to slow down enough we could stop it entirely and get it back into gear. That took a bit, seemed like an hour in memory now. Relevant. I was a mechanic a few years back and our company didn't have the brightest drivers. She went through the Smokies in a full sized coach and called me around 7pm saying her bus smelt like burning rubber and her abs light came on. I checked her GPS and asked her if she was using her engine brake and said yes. I didn't believe her so I asked her how she was using it, replied with the one on the floor, they are controlled on the steering wheel like cruise control. Ended up replacing 6 rotors, all cracked and glazed, 6 sets of pads, 1 ab sensor, and 2 wheel seals. Drive brakes had no friction material left and they were replaced 20k miles before she left. Moral of the story, stay away from big vehicles in the mountains. Most drivers know what the frick they are doing. 
It's the Roadmaster Graduals with a year of experience you gotta worry about. I crashed and no one in Scranton PA got any of their 30,000 pounds of bananas. Hopefully the bananas were cleaned up so we didn't have cars skidding out. Not a story about using a runaway truck ramp, but why they're so important. Just about 4 years ago my boyfriend died from exactly this situation. He was coming out of the mountains in WV, smoked his brakes, pulled over to let them cool off in between hills but apparently didn't let them cool off enough. He lost control about a half mile from the bottom. I haven't seen the area myself, but I'm told quite a few truckers have died there and a ramp could easily have saved his life. To all the truckers, please be careful out there. I know we all think it won't happen to us, but it does happen to some and I know none of you want to leave loved ones behind for a silly mistake. My mother was a trucker for a number of years, and in the early 80s was hauling a load of old El Pozo sauce to California. At the top of the mountain, in Grapevine, she had the brakes on the trailer adjusted for the trip down the mountain. Instead, the guy had accidentally backed her trailer brakes completely off. So she starts trucking down into State 5 down the mountain in a beat up old Peterbilt when she learns that truck, trailer, and 20 tons of taco sauce have only the tractor brakes to stop the thing. She managed to bring it down to 6th gear in an 8 speed, and then the brakes were too hot to slow the truck down. Speedometer needle passed 100 and stopped against the peg. Engine over revved, and she rode the thing down the hill laying on the horn the entire way. Didn't take a run off ramp because she didn't want to get fired. Didn't have an engine brake to slow the truck down either. So she rides this thing down the mountain in the triple digits. Smoke pouring off her axles, dodging traffic. When she hit the bottom of the mountain, said it took her about 5 miles to stop the truck. My dad was a lorry driver around Europe when I was around 13 and he would take me with him. I got to see some incredible things and went to loads of countries I haven't seen since. This particular time we were coming out of a tunnel. I'd like to say it was the Mont Blanc but I can't be sure. Looking at pictures it doesn't remind me of the roads you get on the way out. The road was high altitude and windy on the way down. We heard a message over CB radio that someone needed help. Their brakes weren't working. The lane you used when you had no brakes was situated at the bottom of the mountain exit road. So there's no way he was making it. He'd asked if anyone could help. My dad volunteered but was too far behind. We listened as another two drivers agreed they would make a block in the road so he could smash into the back of them to slow himself until they reached the toll at the bottom of the road. He complained that it was a new motor and his boss would kill him. In the end he weighed up his options fairly quickly and agreed he'd smash into the other lorry from behind and the driver in front would slow his brakes for the remainder of the journey. It worked and we passed them further down the road. Had there been no other English speaking drivers around, I'm pretty sure he would have endured a horrible death by plummeting from the road into the abyss below. That was the first time I learned about the roads they built to be used by drivers whose brakes have failed. Further down the road my dad pointed it out. There was no way he was making it. Story from my dad, who is a trucker and comes from a long line of truckers. This is a story his uncle told him. Uncle was over the road driver. Occurred in the 60s or 70s. Uncle loses brakes in the Rockies. Knows there is a ramp up ahead. Lays on his horn as there is traffic ahead. People ahead start speeding up or pulling over to get out of his way. Directly ahead of him is a man in a sedan. The man realizes my uncle's truck is out of control, but apparently doesn't understand what the ramp is for, as he pulls into it ahead of my uncle in an apparent attempt to clear the road. My uncle decides he's going to run him over because he knows he's coming up on a town and thinks this will be a lesser disaster than hitting the town out of control. Right before he turns into the ramp he sees four heads pop up in the back seat and realizes there are children in the car. He basically radios a mayday in his CB and ends up with a police escort through the town and crashes into a temporary barricade or maybe just a ditch. Did not lose his job. Did not quit driving through the Rockies. But did spend some time in the hospital because the resulting crash wasn't awesome. Was a safety manager for the soon to be largest trucking company in the US. I fired a lot of drivers for this. Me. Why were you going 90 downhill? Are you aware of our company policies? Driver. I thought I'd just let her go lol. LPT. Be conscious of training companies. There is an abundance of don't give a frick and terminal managers will fight taking them off the road to keep their turnover rate low. Passenger on my dad's truck. 
We didn't use the runaway ramp but he did smoke the brakes. He was driving at night, near the France-Italy border and dunno but this time crap went wrong. Also because it was at night we barely noticed the smoke. Another truck from our country was laying on the horn to draw our attention. I nearly crapped myself when I saw the smoke but in the end the brakes cooled off and everything was fine. In high school one of my friends decided to drive into one at full speed in his little VW rabbit. Stopped him within a few yards of entering. Buried up to the axles. Had to call a tow truck to pull him out. You have been visited by the cute papa of charisma and flirting. Smooth talking and successful flirts will come to you. But only if you comment. Hey there. Papa below this picture. If you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then. Check out another video. Or don't. Either way. Have a great day you magnificent people.